Oh, we can either go to Mexico or the center of the world. What do you think we should do, we Marty? Left onto center of the world drive, Frontage Road. It's in the center of the world. All right. Did you know that the center of the world was here? This is here? California, that's where it's telling you to turn. Town of Felicity? Yep, town of Felicity. Continue on center of the world. No population, but the elevation's 280 feet. Uh-oh. We're going to be entering without paying the fee. Well, not really. We're going to find out how to pay the fee here in a second. Somebody left a cool rock here. You know how some things just look like they go off into infinity or the perspective is just like perfect? Somebody must have put a lot of thought into how this place was constructed because if you look around, you can just totally tell that things line up a certain way. And it's just really cool. Wow, what a neat little church. I think it would make an awesome venue for a wedding, don't you? Do we dare enter the maze? Here's my chance to either get really lost or really confused. Now that I'm all dazed and confused, let's go see the rest of this place. So where do you suppose the center of the world is? That way? Would you believe that that pyramid houses the center of the world? Here in California? It sure does. And I have the certificate proving I saw it today at exactly 12 o'clock noon. In addition to the center of the world, there's the Museum of History in Granite, Literacy for Millennia that's here. And if you look all around, you can see the granite walls that are up. What's really cool is each of these granite walls is dedicated to a different topic. This one happens to be animals of the world. Something I want to point out is here on the wall, it says scientists estimate each year 10,000. Yeah. 10,000 animal species go extinct. Wow. At that rate, what's going to be left at the end of the world? I just learned something new. No two tigers have the same striped pattern, which makes them as distinctive as human fingerprints. Mabel, this one's dedicated to you. All right, one more animal and then I'll move on. I just can't help myself. I've always loved animals. And this one in particular, koalas. Oh, when I was a kid, I always wanted a koala. And a panda. Yep, I wanted a panda bear too. Over here, we've got the history of the United States of America, which 1776 is the year of our birth date. And of course, the very first topic over here is a nation of immigrants talking about immigration and the immigration policies over the years. The thing is, with the exception of the Native Americans who were here before the white settlers, we're all immigrants. We all came from other countries. I know immigration is such a hot topic these days. People are very divided in their views, but I just want to put that, put that little reminder out there. Anyway, just a little food for thought. People will get all stirred up now talking about politics on my channel, which wasn't my intent. But let's, let's move on to something more fun. How about arachnids? Have you ever seen one of these things before? Supposedly, they can run as fast as 10 miles per hour. Over here, we've got David, Michelangelo's version of David, and I don't think YouTube's gonna allow me to show David in his full glory. So we're giving him a little bit of a hand in modesty by giving him a modesty hand in front of his goods. And over here, we've got the Liberty Bell. 
or at least a half-scale replica of the one in Philadelphia. This unique structure is actually a sundial and that arm that you see there represents the arm of God that you see in the Michelangelo painting on the Sistine Chapel. And if I had to guess, although I'm not up to date on my sundial reading, if I had to guess the time based on this, I'd say it's close to 3 p.m. Unfortunately, I'm not wearing a watch, so I can't verify the exact time. Marty, what time is it? 2.30. 2.30? Looks like I don't have to go to sundial reading class after all. I was only a half hour off. Two last things before we head out of Felicity. There's a huge checkerboard or chessboard there and steps from the original Eiffel Tower. Legitimately, this here is a section of the Eiffel Tower that was cut out some years ago. They replaced the steps because they were too heavy and the Eiffel Tower was starting to have issues. And so the owners of this wonderful place purchased a section of the stairs and they have them on display here. Totally cool. Now I can say I've seen part of the Eiffel Tower even though I've never even been to Paris, France. After journeying to the center of the world in California, I worked up an appetite. So getting a date shake here. Mmm. These are so good. Do you know the story behind the center of the world, Marty? No. It was actually based on a children's book. Ask me if I care. <laughs> Do you care? No. <laughs> Do you no. care? No, but you can tell a story anyways. <gasps> so the owner of the center of the world decided that in order to come up with legitimacy for establishing the center of the world there, he had to write a children's book about a dragon. And that's, folks, sightseers, how the center of the world became to be in California. Special thanks goes out to all our fellow sightseers here on Patreon and PayPal. Without you, these videos wouldn't be possible.